so let's finish this lesson with just some more let's say a little bit more advanced concept on concepts on classes and we are now going to be speaking about class attributes we have our foodstuff class which we have made a little bit more complex we have defined method so far and some functions that use them but sometimes we want to define characteristics of one class that do not exactly belong to the objects of the class for example one way that we can do that is defining class attributes okay how how would that work so characteristics of the class that are not directly related to objects of the class okay so sometimes there are concepts that relate to the idea in general but not necessarily to every specific instance of the idea let's see one example before I define that all of the objects of my class all the food stuff that I'm going to be working with will have names and prices and tastiness and filling power okay and with the filling power I being the mathematician that I am just gave it a number so I had a uh, statements before like this food stuff is called crazy toro salmon costs about 400 yen has taste in is 9.5 and filling power 1.5 okay so i had numbers for all of my attributes that's perfectly fine but sometimes people don't speak like that so people do like valorations they have use sentences like very much a little pretty really not at all okay so i'm going to change my foodstuff class to include that that possibility of doing valoration so when i speak about my tastiness level or the feeling power of any of my foodstuff objects then i will change the way i refer to them the way I evaluate them so that I use these words instead of just giving a number as you can see this way to transform my number for tastiness into some words like not very tasty or not at all tasty or a little tasty or very tasty uh, doesn't really relate to each specific object I'm not going to do that differently for ramen or for uh for curry i am going to do that in the same way for all of the objects of the class so this is a behavior that belongs to the class but doesn't exactly change with the objects it doesn't relate directly to the objects so i'm going to define an attribute but i'm going to define it outside of the init method outside of any method of the class that's related to an object through the self reserved word okay so i'm going to have this attribute here and this is a class attribute okay so this is a variable an attribute inside of my class that belongs to the class but it's not directly related to the objects so we will see in a second i can still call it from my objects because Oh, every object belongs to the class so it will also have access to this one but it's not defined in the methods related to the object it's defined in the class itself okay and i'm going to do something like just define a list of tuples again and if something is lower than 2.5 in either tastiness or filling power it's going to be not at all tasty or not at all filling if it's between 2 and 5 2.5 and 5 it's going to be not very tasty or not very filling and so on and so forth a little pretty and really really tasty really feeling if it's from 9 to 10 okay so i will use this to create a new method that is going to use the objects in my class so i'm going to have to call this evaluate number method in with the objects in my class and then i'm going to just 
traverse this list and find the proper word to my number. I'm going to receive a number n and wherever I end up I'm going to return this word. Okay, and you can just check that what this does is basically look at the first element in each tuple, so element zero, 0 in each tuple and see if my n is smaller than that okay and if it's smaller than that then I have to stop if it's not I will go on and on and on until I find that I have already surpassed my value and I can stop and return whatever is in the second position of the table tuple. okay so I'm going to re, re to traverse this list looking at the first number and one this number is bigger than the value that I have I'm going to just uh, go give back sorry give back when this number is bigger than the value that I have I'm going to give back the associated word okay and now I'm going to use this evaluate number new method inside of my string magic method so instead of saying this food stuff is a 9.5 tasty I'm going to say is evaluate number and tastiness tasty okay so I'm going to every time someone calls a string on me I'm going to come here do this using this class attribute and return things like this food stuff is called ramen costs about 500 yen this is just like I said before it's 7.5 I'm still giving it I'm still a mathematician but pretty tasty and not very filling okay so I have changed the behavior of my class by using one class attribute and now this has changed some of the methods in my class okay I can now define the foodstuff and this is called when I use print because the string method is a magic method and this one calls the evaluate number and the evaluate number uses the valorations and as you can see the valorations I access them from my object I'm still calling self.valorations but the valorations are not defined here what's happening? well because they belong to the class and the object of the class can also access class attributes when I do self.something ja uh, Java, not Java, Python will first look for an object attribute of that name and if it cannot find it it will look for a class attribute of the same name okay moving on in addition to defining attributes that belong to the class but not to specific objects we can also define methods that belong to the class but are not invoked are not called with one specific object and those are called static methods in this case I'm just going to continue with my example and I will want to change my static attribute okay sorry my class attribute I will not want to change this one from inside of uh, an object I could do it, I can access it, but it's not very clean it's better if I change things that are defined inside of the object methods I have all of my object attributes defined in the init method but I could have them also in other functions maybe we will do that in other sessions of this course but uh, I prefer not to change attributes that belong to the class and not to the objects okay and to change these attributes that belong to the class and not to the objects I can use methods that are static I use this this is something called a decorator and I will not stop now at what decorators are but let's say it's just a powerful way in which Python can change the way in which the code works using some template okay so I'm going to just write this aroba static method 
Okay, and then I'm going to define modify valorations. And Python will interpret that whenever it finds this, it doesn't need to call this method with an object. Okay. What does the method do? Well, it basically changes the valorations attribute at each position or at one given position. So I'm going to give it a position i, a limit, and a new val. So I'm going to go to this list and change one of the positions, change the two values of the tuple at one of the positions. And I'm going to receive the positions and the two new values that I have to write there. Okay, so I'm going to change the valorations list in position i and change it for this new tuple. Notice that because this is static, I'm not calling it with any object because I will not have an object with when I'm calling this. Instead, I'm using the name of the class. When I want to call one of these methods that belong to the class, but do not belong to the objects of the class to modify this type of behavior that's general to the class but not directly related to the objects, then I use the name of the class dot. Okay. And here we can see an example of how that works. I can call that modify valoration static method without using any object. Okay, I could use an object too, but I don't want to. I'm just going to modify them using the foodstuff name of the class. Okay. Okay. That's it for this lesson. We have been speaking about why we are doing object-oriented programming. We have seen what classes and objects are and we have said quite a lot of times that classes are abstract. The ideas that we are working for and that's the basis of the foundation of object-oriented programming. When I move from those abstract ideas, from those abstract classes to the real world, I instantiate them, I make them real, I turn them into objects and I can have as many objects of each class as I want to. The functions that explain how the properties of the objects, uh, the properties of the classes work are and are defined inside of the classes are called class methods, okay? The variables that explain the characteristics of my objects and of my classes are called attributes. And we have seen that sometimes we have object attributes and that's the most frequent ones. We have defined all of those inside of a very special method that we call the init method. And we have also defined attributes that are a little bit more general and don't relate exactly to the objects, but do relate to the class. Those are called class attributes. Okay. And we have seen just in this second part, in this final part, that we can even define methods that belong to the class but are not really directly related to the objects. Those are called static methods. For the rest of the course, we're going to be seeing quite a lot more about object-oriented programming and the many, many things that we can do with it. I just wanted to say today to finish that of course, this is a really good way to write better code that we can use with more people, make it more modular and easier to reuse and so on and so forth, all the good stuff that we already said. But using oriented programming, learning oriented programming is also very important because most of the code libraries out there use this paradigm. So if you want to use the very nice algorithms for image processing that we are going to really want to use in the OpenCV library of image processing or in the PyTorch deep learning library, then you're going to want to know what all of those dots are, what all of those objects that these classes have are. So understanding object-oriented programming is also going to be very important to be able to use code libraries and we want we will want to do that quite a lot okay that's it for this session